Good morning, everybody. How are we doing? Good. I'm Jay Ryan, and I get to lead you through this wonderful experience called the Cardboard Boat Building School. And uh, by the way, I don't want to do that. By the way, um, this will be online next week, so that if, uh, if I say anything that's really brilliant and you want to come back and listen to it, which is unlikely to happen, by the way, I thought I'd mention that, uh, you can listen to it on the City of Arlington's YouTube channel uh, next week. And prior years are out there as well. But anyway, this is going to be our 24th annual, and it is, um, uh, looking for the actual date, I think it's April 27th, Christy? April 27th, which is a Saturday. And we are programming that day to be in the mid-70s to uh, lower 80s. Uh, with uh, a light breeze. Just thought I'd mention that, that we're working on the, uh, the weather forecast. Now, the, the water at uh, Hurricane Harbor is going to be heated just for us um, by the sun. And uh, <laughs> so bring, bring your little feet things that keep your toes warm. Uh, this is the 24th time that we've decided to do a cardboard boat regatta, and it benefits uh, it benefits River Legacy Foundation, which basically helps fund the, uh, the science school at River Legacy. How many people have been at the science school? Not a whole lot of people. All right, you, you need to go see it. It's really neat. You can see snakes have dinner of their frogs, and you can see all kinds of fun uh, real life uh, going on of the park, and it's just a fun place to, to learn. Uh, and we have a lot of people go through that place uh, every week and all year long. Do we have a number of how many? 40,000 people. So if you're the 40,000th and one, you need to come and see it. There's 40,000 people go through that place every year to, for, for that educational experience. So anyway, so that's what it benefits is the science school and the River Legacy Foundation is over, over that and they're trying to uh, to make it an even better experience. So my next demographic question is, where are you all from? I assume we have a bunch of students from schools. So who here is from a school? Most everybody is from a school, OK? And uh, how many people do we have that have done this before, that have uh, participated before? Very good. So we have a number of folks that have been here before. Uh, and did you have fun? Yeah. It's, uh, did you get wet? No, we got some no's and we got some yeses. Okay. All right. Uh, when you checked in, you received a packet. Let me go through that. One is the agenda of what we're doing. Two is very important, and I'll remind you this is the evaluation sheet. We want to know, uh, know which session is, uh, is the best or the worst. You don't need to pre-fill it in for, for the uh, boat building actual session as being the best or the worst. But, uh, but there, you'll, I think you'll enjoy all of that. So we need, uh, we need to have that evaluation from you, if possible, please. Uh, then in the packet, there is an entry form. The entry form uh, is also, all of this is going to be downloadable off of the River Legacy website, riverlegacy.org website, uh, starting on Monday. So the form is what you need to do your entry into the, uh, into the regatta. And uh, there's also a form here that is for the mini boat regatta. Now, we're not going to talk about the mini boat regatta today, but basically, that is small boats made out of wood that people, uh, that, that young people can assemble or buy assembled. And, uh, uh, and they basically race them in water filled gutters. Okay? And so that is a, uh, that's a fun event. That's the mini boat regatta. That's your registration form if you so need. But the, uh, the main part of our event today is, uh, is this boat building manual. So this is going to be kind of the paper background. Uh, and once again, you can download this off of the website. This is the, uh, this is the background for all of that which is going to be shared with you today on how to build your cardboard boat. The rules, the regs, the advice, what will work, what won't work, and so forth. So, uh, so that is the key to our educational experience today. The, uh, and, and by the way, just as a side note, if your boat building experience, if you want to streamline through this process of building boats, there are boat building kits. 
Uh, I think this, this uh, bag, are you gonna use this, Gary, the, the one that's already lined out? So you can see this, uh, this piece of cardboard over here that's lined out and cut. That is what you would get with a kit plus a bunch of other stuff, you know, uh, assembly instructions, um, uh, rolls of tape, so forth, so on. So all of that, you can get those details out front. And that kit is uh, $125. And you can place your order today if you wanted to, to have that kit when, uh, when they're available. So if you uh, want to become uh, less adventurous to start just with a blank sheet of cardboard. Now, uh, you can also get uh, cardboard if your schools, uh, which many of you indicated you were, cardboard is available uh, for free. Uh, and you can see the reduced rate on the registration for schools. So all of those being the case, it's very favorable that you're at a school and learning how to do this under the guidance of a teacher. And uh, you can get cardboard for free and you, could get, uh, you can get the reduced rate on your uh, registration. So um, let's see, where else do we need to go here? Oh, uh, if you want to keep in touch before we get to the regatta itself or even during the regatta, uh, the, uh, the, uh, card, uh, the Cardboard Boat Regatta itself, you can uh, follow it on Facebook. And Facebook also will have, uh, we have our own River Legacy page, and it's facebook.com River Legacy Parks is the, is the place where you can do that. Now, we do have a couple of new things uh, this year that we're, we're exploring, and it's because, I don't know if you've seen in the news that uh, Hurricane Harbor is uh, putting in a new water ride. And so that new water ride is right where we used to play uh, volleyball and do our tug of wars for our team challenge. Side note, there are team challenges where high schools can compete against each other, corporations can compete against each other, et cetera. And that, that team challenge kind of rolls up into a, uh, into a points you win for the challenges and points you win for boats and so forth so you can become a team champion uh, that way, but the, uh, the Hurricane Harbor people are tearing that up. They, they were trying to give away buckets of sand just the other day uh, as they took the volleyball courts up and they're building a ride. Uh, but the, the, uh, that's going away and what we're gonna do is we're gonna have horseshoe pitching tournament and three-point basketball. So, and, uh, and so the, anybody over 13 can, uh, can participate in those. You can pre-register for those as well. But uh, the horseshoe pitching tournament, uh, I, went, I took the liberty of checking out the NHPA uh, site, which is the National uh, Horseshoe Pitching Association. And so I have all kinds of neat stuff that I can share with you, not that you want to know it. Um, anyway, and then the other thing that's, uh, so we're doing horseshoe pitching and we're doing uh, three-point basketball. Uh, they're elements to our corporate challenge or our team challenge. Um, the other thing we're doing is that, assuming that you have participated in the races and you're still relatively dry and not frozen because of the cool water or anything like that, you can do what we call Brave the Waves. And that's at the very end, the very last event of the, uh, of the regatta. If your boat is seaworthy, S-E-A I think is how you spell it, even though there's no ocean there, uh, that you can do Brave the Waves. And that's uh, $20, um, uh, $20, and, and you get to go into the wave pool, on, and, uh, and, and we'll turn on the waves, and you can titanic your way to joy and fun swimming early season. So the, the titanic awards and the brave the waves is something else that we're still doing. The, uh, the tornado, in between your boat competitions, the tornado, you know that funny Swirling ride is available, $5 unlimited tornado rides. And then we have uh, also the uh, Sky Coaster, you know, that big uh, 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 swing ride where you get strapped in and you go back and forth. That's also uh, going to be on during the day of, uh, of the regatta. And uh, people can also play in Hook's Lagoon and the children's area. And uh, there's a hula hoop contest. And of course, the mini boat regatta is going on. So a lot of stuff going on. And uh, concessions will also uh, certainly be there to keep you fed. And if you wanted to pre-order pizzas to be delivered at a certain time, we, can, we are taking orders for those. So there, 
that information is, uh, uh, will be available. Uh, no outside food or drink is allowed in the park, and, uh, and so the pre-order of, of pizzas for groups uh, will, be, uh, will be there. So on the 27th of April, the, uh, the youth area begins, youth can check in and come into the park starting at about 8.30. And you'll know before you get there what your boat number is, you'll know what category you are, and you can go and put your boat in its parking spot and prepare. And if you've brought parents or teachers or friends and family that, that, uh, uh, that, that are coming along to watch and enjoy the day with you, that's great because I'll be there uh, emceeing and I'll introduce, with the judges following me, I'll introduce each boat. So if you have a song you wanna sing or a cheer you wanna make, I'll try and find the captain of the boat and we can have fun and everybody in the park will hear that. And so it's kind of a crazy time. I tend to lose my voice real quickly for that. But uh, then that judging is what, what we'll, uh, we'll do some awards with. So uh, that starts at 8.30, uh, adult boats, uh, can come in, uh, check in at 9.30, and the youth races actually start at 10 o'clock. So we've got a bit of time there for you to get your boat there. As soon as we have enough boats, I'll start judging the boats with the, with the assigned judges. I don't judge them, but other people will judge them, and we'll go around and we'll judge, and we'll come up with our awards. So um, that's, uh, that's basically where we are. So the uh, the, uh, uh, so, uh, we want to recognize our supporters, uh, Moritz dealerships, once again, are, we're pleased to have them, Westlake's Arlington Hardware, Star Telegram, and Bates uh, uh, Container are the people that help us make all of this available, and there's some signage here, and you'll see it on the website as well. So we have, uh, we have a series of presentations, sorry that that's going in and out like that, we have a series of pre presentations. Ryan Haig is gonna be up first, and he's gonna talk about engineering tips, and then, uh, then Gary Daly and Bob Sherwood have two sessions on how to actually build your boat, and, uh, and then Sue Wilhide will talk about design ideas and some of the other neat stuff going on. So we have a busy morning, but not, uh, not too busy, but when the pres presenters are up here, if you have questions, I encourage you to kind of make note of those questions uh, especially for Gary and, uh, and Bob's session. They'll be here afterwards as long as they need to be to, to uh, answer questions, or you can come up and look at what they've done or uh, ask detailed construction stuff. So, uh, but if you have questions, try not to be too uh, uh, invasive in your questions to interrupt the session so we can get through this, but people will answer them afterwards. Um, and then the other thing, I'm gonna ask you some questions too, because I have a few things to give away so, uh, uh, so I have a number of things. I have some shirts, I have some towels, I have some other things. So I have a question for you. Do you have any clue what my name is? I'll still give you the measuring stick because <laughs> it's not important. All right, and, and how about you? Do you have any clue what date the regatta is? That's close, 28th, 27th. All right, April 27th, Saturday morning, bright and early. It's uh, gonna be 75 degrees by eight o'clock when you get to walk in there. All right, uh, I think I've got all of the details or at least most of them, I'll catch up on the rest. So I wanna introduce to you our resident engineer, Ryan Haig, and Ryan works with uh, CPNY in Fort Worth, so he knows about all of this stuff. He's not one of those engineers you know, with the striped hats that runs trains, he's one of the different kind of engineers. That was a joke. Come on up, Ryan. <laughs> Ryan Haig is going to talk to us about engineering and uh, what to watch for. And make note, I'm going to come back and ask you questions, trivia questions about what he presents, and I'll give you some prizes with him. All right, Ryan Haig. Good morning, everyone. Everyone ready to learn about engineering? Of course, who wouldn't be? All right. <clears throat> Ordinarily, a gentleman named Jeff Williams gives this presentation, and he does a heck of a job at it. I have uh, have taken some notes on what he's given, but he can't make it today. So I'm gonna try to take his place. I competed on two nationally ranking concrete canoe teams. So I do know a thing or two about making weird stuff float. <clears throat> We're gonna go through a few pictures of some boats that have competed in the past. I know a few of you said that you've been part of this competition before, so 
Since I haven't, if you know more about one of these boats than I do, feel free to yell at me, just tell me what I'm missing, and I am A-OK -okay with that. I do not have my feelings hurt very easily. <clears throat> uh. All right, so this first boat is, has what looks to be a twin hull. You've got people on either side paddling, and you, you see the width and the stability that goes into this boat. Those girls are not gonna tip very easily. Pay attention to the prow. This is gonna be really important. We're gonna talk a lot about prows and cutting water and, and essentially being able to, to propel your boat forward with as little effort as possible. This boat, on the other hand, I'm sorry, this boat is also very stable. You see the, the width that's going into that. And these guys have a really cool presentation, but both of these boats are really good looking. Um, you're you're going to see a lot of <clears throat> you're going to see a lot of artistry going into these boats, and that that makes this competition an awful lot of fun. All right, I've, I'm I'm tired of looking at stable boats. I want to see some people tipping over. So here's what we've got. These gentlemen are about to lose it. Their boat is really tall and narrow. This means that they ride high in the water, and when you ride high in the water, your center of gravity is, is above the water line, and that makes it very easy to tip. The, the boat might look great, and you might be able to sit in it with no problem, but remember that you're going to be reaching out to paddle. So if you start veering off track and everybody reaches out to one side, you're going to fall in the water, the, as these gentlemen learned. Got a couple of boats right here. <clears throat> Let's look at the green boat here on the left. They've just got a flat front. They, they raised the front of their boat a little bit out of the water, so they're able to cut the water a little bit smoother. We're going to talk about prowls a little bit more in depth here in a minute. More, another flat boat. These, um, these gentlemen are having a hard time paddling their boat because it's just pushing a lot of water. All right, types of holes. This is where the engineering stuff kicks in. Type A that you see on the top left of your page is a very stable hole. You see it, it's got a lot of width to it. The sides are curved, so it can roll a little bit without rolling into the water. You look at D, and the moment you reach out to the side, if you're rowing a boat with hole letter D, it's going to roll. So that's a really attractive, really nice looking hole, but you're going to tip pretty much immediately. B is somewhat counterintuitive. You look at B, and it's, it's easy to think that that boat's not going to go anywhere. It, it's, it's got the best stability of any of the holes that are on here. If you have a good solid prow that's going to cut water, you can build a winning boat with hole B because it's stable. You're not going to be rolling back and forth. You're going to be able to paddle it without having to constantly adjust to keep yourselves upright in the water. C is kind of a flat-edged version of A. I think C would be a good solid hull. I've never seen a boat built with C. Any, any former competitors? Anybody? No. C offers a lot of stability. You're going to roll side to side a little bit more than you would in A or B. <clears throat> D, as I mentioned, is, is not not very stable at all. E is another one that's somewhat counterintuitive. That one tends to roll quite a bit just because of the shape of the bottom of the hole. F is a nice fast hole. You're going to be able to get you're really going to be able to get going in F and it's very stable. The big problem you're going to see with using a twin hole design like that is turning. That thing is going to be an absolute bear to try to turn around. Here's some different prow shapes that we can look at. As we mentioned earlier, the one, this one here on the top left, the Shirley Jest nose, 
All you're going to be doing all day is pushing water. The, it's not going to cut any water at all, which is going to make paddling very laborious. It's, this is not going to move. If you're not trying to move, if you're just trying to build a showboat, that's just fine. But that's not going anywhere. There's one on the top right. The moment you get any kind of velocity, the nose of your boat is going underwater, which is not good. <clears throat> so now we start getting into some more of the cutting type hold, uh, nose designs. Right here, middle on the left, you have the V nose. And any, really, any of these four would make that rectangular hole design we looked at earlier. Any one of these four would, would make that work. What you're trying to do is you're trying to cut the water away from your boat. Water, and can consider, think of, of car designs and how the, the fastest cars are always very sleek and they'll, they're always very narrow at the front. Air and water are both fluid. They both function the same. You, you, want, you want to be able to push water away from your boat the way you want to push air away from your car. This sloped nose is pretty good. Any of these sloped noses are, are going to do really well for you. They're going to push water under and away from your boat. So they've really got a, two, a two-fold purpose. All right, now we're going to start getting into some math. Does anybody know how much water weighs? What, what the density of water is? I, I have a very, very excited volunteer. What's going on? Tell us how much water weighs. Approximately, yeah. About 60 pounds per cubic foot. What you want to ideally be able to do is any boat, I, I mentioned earlier that I used to race concrete boats, which doesn't make much sense. But as long as your boat displaces more water, a greater weight of water than it weighs, as long as the density of your overall boat is less than 60 pounds per cubic foot, you're going to float. The question is how high and how stable. This is a one cubic foot box. And these gentlemen, they're going to follow me up and talk about building your boats. We'll tell you that tape is not allowed, I believe. But we're going to use this just for demonstration. This is one cubic foot. <clears throat> if you take 60 and divide it by 12, you get 5. And there's 12 inches in a foot. So what that means is that I, if I put 5 pounds into this box, it's going to depress it by 1 inch. Again. For every five pounds I add into this box, it's going to submerge approximately an inch. And I'm getting ahead of myself there and talking about balance. So I've got two five pound weights in there. It's now approximately two inches underneath the water line. <clears throat> Here's a boat design that's about 15 cubic feet. So in water weight, that would weigh 900 pounds. 900 divided by 12 means that for every 75 pounds that's in that boat, it's going to depress one inch. So if you have a 12 inch tall boat and 300 pounds in it, it's going to depress four inches, so you're going to have eight inches above the water line. <clears throat> now, let's talk about stability and center of gravity. I'm going to be, Ryan, can you stand up for a moment, please? This is, this is my friend, Ryan Faulkner. He and I are going to be paddling together for the, for the competition on what day? Yeah. April, tw that's what, thank you. You can see quite easily that I'm a lot heavier than him. That, all right, you're, you're good now, thank you. That's, that's all I needed you to do. I just needed you to stand up so that everybody sees that I'm heavier than you. <laughs> so. We talked a lot earlier about prows and, and the nose of your boat. We also need to talk about balance and, and getting the, the nose of your boat up above the water line. Because if the nose of your boat is shaped properly, but you have the heavier person in the front of the boat, 
So I'm just going to go ahead and, and separate these two boats, separate these two weights. If the heavier person is in the front of your boat, you're going to be listing to the front, which means that the moment you get any velocity, that beautiful prowl that you developed could quite easily turn into a submarine nose. So <clears throat> as you're planning, if you have a boat that just has a cockpit, if you have a boat that just has a cockpit, you want that cockpit not in the very back of your boat. You don't want it so far back that, you're right, that your nose is way up in the air. But you do want to make sure that you're conscious of balancing the weight in your boat towards the back half. That's going to lift your nose, going to let water under your boat easier, and it's going to give you a little bit of speed. Let's look at center of gravity. <clears throat> if your center of gravity is above the waterline, as, as we saw with those gentlemen earlier, they had the really narrow boat, their center of gravity was above the waterline, which made it a lot easier for their boat to tip over. The moment they reached out the side of that thing, that center of gravity got a little bit off the center, and boom, they went right into the water. If your center of gravity is lower, like this box right here, you give it a tip and the gravity wants to bring it right back to the center position. So that, <clears throat> that is what you're looking for. You're looking for a boat that's got good width, doesn't ride too high in the water. You, 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 don't, you, don't, wanna, you don't wanna be way up out of the water. And then another thing you have to consider when you're looking at being way up out of the water is paddling. We've seen boats in the past where people would reach out the side and they couldn't even reach the water with their paddle. And if you can't paddle, obviously, you're not gonna win anything. Except maybe the Titanic Award. So <clears throat> let's just look really quick at, at a couple of these different blue lines. And, and these gentlemen that are gonna be coming up behind me are gonna talk a little bit more at length about actually building your boat, actually designing it. But you, you wanna be thinking ahead. And these, gen these folks right here, you see right here, this second panel on each side, that's gonna be your height panel. And the, this particular, <clears throat> thank you, uh, this particular blue line is for a 12 inch tall boat. And then <clears throat> this one is gonna, be, this one is gonna be a little bit wider, two and a half foot wide, two, two foot, pardon me, two foot two inches deep. So this is a little bit more of a square hole. They're gonna have a lot of stability on this. They've got their sloped and V nose to make sure that they're able to cut water. Just another example of some potential blue lines you could draw up. And here is a fun wreck. So any questions? Does anybody understand anything? <laughs> Did, did, I, did I get the info across? I hope so. Well, I'm going to be around, so if you guys have any questions, please come and find me. Um, I'm more than willing to help you out. And these gentlemen behind me are going to talk a little bit about actual construction. Good. Thank you, Ryan. I want to give your mic to, to Gary. Ryan Hay. <laughs> Thanks. Sir. The boat's getting wet. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, hey, I forgot to mention one, one fun fact that, uh, that we discovered, and that is that, uh, has, has anybody heard of the USS Fort Worth? Remember that was the ship that was launched in Corpus Christi, I think, and it was a, uh, it's called a, a Navy Littoral Combat Ship. Uh, uh, and that boat was launched in Corpus Christi, named after the city of Fort Worth, and the person that built that, Jonathan, or the person that designed it, Jonathan uh, Applequist is his name, he, uh, he designed that boat. His first boat was named the last minute here at the Cardboard Boat Regatta. So there is a career path for those that really, uh, pardon the expression, go overboard on, uh, on boats. All right, I have, I told you I had a couple of, uh, uh, a couple of uh, fun things to give away, and uh, I have a question. What was the, 
one of the key things that he was trying to describe as an important uh, factor when, you, when you're designing your boat? The prow, okay, that's my second question, but what, what's the benefit that he's looking for? Yes, ma'am. Center of gravity or stability, yes. Okay, could you pass that back? That's a, a bag and some cups and a pencil. All right, uh, now let me ask a question as follow-up on the prow question. This is a multiple choice, a prow. Is that a bobcat, a tiger, or is that the cutting edge of the boat? Cutting edge of the boat. All right, so I'm going to let you throw in the towel. <laughs> All right, and we had a question before, which was the, uh, the weight of water. And you answered it, 60, uh, uh, 60 pounds per cubic foot. There's a $20 gift certificate, gift card for uh, West Lakes Harbor. So there you go. And I have a measuring stick, a uh, measuring uh, tape. What really personal question do you need to ask the people that are going to be in the boat with you? Really personal question. I'm going to go back to the far back. Pardon? No, that wasn't the one I was like. That's, that's personal, but that's not that personal. Young lady in the back. How much do you weigh? I have this tape measure for you, ma'am. So you need to, before you go building your boat or designing your boat, is you need to know how many people are going to be in the boat, how many people are going to be in it, and approximately how much do they weigh. All right, the next session, uh, the next two sessions, actually, uh, are going to be led by Gary Daly and Bob Sherwood. And Gary and Bob have done this for years. Gary happens to be uh, the owner-operator of Randall Mill Pharmacy, and they've been a uh, corporate challenge winner for years. And so we, uh, let's welcome them up to the stage. And they're going to talk first about supplies. And then we're gonna, I'm going to come in and interrupt it again, ask some follow-up questions to make sure you all are listening. And then we'll go into actually building the boat. Gary and Bob. There you go. Thank you, Jay. Well, uh, Ryan gave us a pretty good idea how to uh, put a boat on a piece of paper and uh, draw it up and get it designed and get ready to build. But, but obviously, before you can build anything, you have to have the supplies in order to build it. So we're going to just talk about some of the things that you might need to actually build a cardboard boat. Uh, what would be the number one item? Well, of course, some cardboard. Our rules uh, for the regatta state that the cardboard we use must be corrugated cardboard. Well, what's corrugated? What's that mean? Everybody's seen an edge of a piece of cardboard before, and you, there's a little waffle or a little weave in there. This is what's called corrugated cardboard. There are other types of cardboard that are just pressed flat in a hard sheet that don't have the corrugation in there. That's considered an illegal material, so you need to be sure and use corrugated, uh, corrugated cardboard. Well. Okay, so that might bring up the question, where in the heck do I get corrugated cardboard? Well, refrigerator boxes, uh, shipping boxes, any, any, any kind of box you can put your hands on is, uh, is good material to use. Also, though, what really is uh, very easy, a little more expensive, uh, but not for the school groups because you can get it free, is a big sheet of cardboard like this. Westlake's Arlington Hardware will have these available in big sheets. And from year to year, it varies in the size they have available, somewhere between four foot by eight foot. And uh, I think this particular piece, when we started with it, it was five foot by nine foot. But they're, they're somewhere in that range, four by eight, five by nine, five by 10, something like that. And those make really nice uh, uh, sheets of cardboard to start uh, designing your boat from. Um, now we'll talk a little bit more about some of the other supplies that go along with that. Obviously, you're going to have to have a tape measure, okay, to make, oops, excuse me, make your measurements on your boat, pencils, pens, make your marks. Um, a lot of this I know seems simple, but when you're getting organized and getting ready, it's sure more convenient to have everything you need together uh, to get started on your construction. Uh, then you need to have some kind of a knife to cut your cardboard with. A utility razor knife like this works good. Um, there's, others, there's all kinds of styles of these. This is an old uh, carpet cutter's knife or a carpet installer's knife. They work nice too. Any kind of utility knife like that works good. Um, now, we're gonna talk a little bit more about this in a little bit, but when, we, uh, when we're putting a boat together, 
we're going to make uh, different alterations to the cardboard. Some of them are going to be cuts. We're going to cut actually cut pieces out. But there's going to be areas where we're just going to crease the cardboard. We're going to compress the flutes in the cardboard so we can make a fold and a bend to wrap that around. Well, how do you do that? Um, there's several ways you can do it, and we'll show, give you a, a hands-on or a, a demonstration on how to do that. This is my favorite little tool. It's just a, it's a little coping saw, but this little handle on here has just got a rounded edge on it, and we'll use that like this to create a crease on the, uh, in the cardboard. Good old-fashioned crescent wrench works good. You can use a rounded handle on a crescent wrench. I'm just trying to give you some things that you might have around so you don't have to go out and buy a bunch of stuff. That works good for creasing cardboard too. Now once we, once we get it folded or you know creased and we start folding it together, well we've got to hook that cardboard to itself. We use good old fashioned Elmer's wood glue or this is tight bond wood glue. Uh, this is a yellow wood glue. You can use white Elmer's, doesn't matter. Uh, we've tried it with um, hot glue guns. Nah, that works okay. You gotta, you gotta work pretty fast with a hot glue gun. Another thing we found, if it's a hot sunny day out, that hot glue sometimes will get soft and mushy and your boat can actually pull apart. So really the best thing to use, uh, in my opinion, is uh, just a good old Elmer's or, or wood glue. So you've got, if you can envision this, you've kind of got your boat glued together now. Well, there's going to be some seams and joints and stuff that we need to uh, cover up with some tape. There are several different types of tape you can use. You can use good old-fashioned masking tape. Um, here's some paper packing tape, just brown self-adhesive packing tape, and it's a paper tape. That's okay to use. The one I like to use best, and this is really old-school uh, paper tape. This is the old packing tape that has a backing on it that uh, you just get this wet with water and you lay it on your cardboard and wipe it out with a sponge and this works really good, really good. A couple of examples of some tapes that you cannot use. Plastic, any kind of plastic tape. This is a, there, here's some duct tape or just plastic shipping tape. These are considered illegal materials. After all, we're building cardboard boats so we want it to, we want it to be paper. We want it to all be paper-based. We don't want a bunch of plastic on there. So uh, that just keeps it fun and exciting for everybody if we you know, stick with the rules. Another thing that is okay to use um, on some of the seams and joints is you can use caulk. You can't coat your whole boat with caulk. Wouldn't want to, but, you can. but we use this on seams and joints. This particular one, I use this one all the time. It's a DAP. Alex Plus, it's a uh, latex silicone combination caulk. It's relatively inexpensive. It's pretty easy to clean up. You can paint it, uh, paint over it, paint sticks to it good. That's why I like to use this one. You can also use, you can use a silicone caulk, but it's a lot more expensive. It takes longer to dry, um, and you really can't paint it. Paint doesn't really stick to it very well. So I like to, I like to use this kind of uh, a caulk. Now you're going to get to a point when your boat is all built, you're going to want to paint it. I recommend before you actually put color on your boat, put paint color on your boat, that you seal your boat with a polyurethane. Now there's two different kinds of polyurethane you can use. I've got an example of both of them up here. This one, uh, this one is a water-based polyurethane and this one is an oil-based polyurethane. The, difference in the, the differences in the two, the water base dries faster, uh, easier cleanup, costs a little bit more, um, but probably doesn't waterproof your boat as well as the oil-based polyurethane. So the, the advantages to the uh, oil base are just the opposite. Uh, a little less expensive, a little harder to clean up, takes longer to dry, um, but does waterproof your boat better. And you can use either one. Uh, I, I like to, I've, done, I've done both, but I found that the, the uh, oil-based polyurethane waterproofs your boat quite a bit better. And I'd recommend at least two, maybe three coats of polyurethane on your boat before you add, add your color to it. And uh, that, that, in effect, waterproofs your boat 
and then you can come back and put any kind of uh, paint paint you want on it. You can use good old latex house paint. I've got some of that up here. If you really, really want a good, strong um, waterproof finish, you can even use an oil base enamel. And the same, the same uh, principles apply to water-based paint, the latex paint versus the oil-based paint as they do on the polyurethane. Uh, water-based, easier cleanup, dries faster, a little less expensive. Oil-based, takes longer to dry, costs a little more, a little harder to clean up. So that in a nutshell is uh, the materials that you'll need to uh, build your boat. We've also, actually I've got some little clamps up here, little clamps work good. And we'll give some examples of how to use all of these clamps here in our next session when Bob and I get up here. And what we're going to try to do in a relatively short period of time is uh, take this uh, piece of cardboard we've got some lines in, and marks on and try to fold this and uh, fabricate that into a small boat. It won't be big enough for a person to actually get in. It'll be kind of a scaled down version or a model size, but we'll work on that here just a little bit and kind of we're going to buzz through that pretty fast, but we can hang around afterwards and answer any questions you might have. And uh, with that, I'm going to turn it back to Jay for a second and see if anybody was paying attention to anything that I said. This guy over here was sleeping a minute ago. I saw him. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Gary's going to be back up in a second if you want to give him, uh, give him some applause. He's <laughs> grateful for that all the time. All right, I do have some questions for people. Um, and the first question, which will win a uh, uh, little uh, River Legacy bag, is what kind of cardboard is allowed? All right, let's go over to right here, this young, this young lady. What kind of cardboard? Corrugated cardboard. She gets the bag, corrugated cardboard. All right, uh, and where do you get the cardboard? Yes, sir. You can get it at Arlington Hardware. All right, let me reinforce that. So he gets, uh, he gets the measure, the uh, tape measure. All right, you can, uh, let me reinforce that, that one, you can get it at Arlington Hardware, or if you are a school, there are two dates that you can come pick it up, and you can pick it up, uh, you, you, everybody know where the Guitar Center is, for example, up in, uh, up in North Arlington? Back behind that, there's the shopping center. It's Ryan Plaza Drive, for whatever that's worth. We never know that, but uh, that, uh, that's where we will have the uh, cardboard available on February 18th and February 22nd. So you can find those dates and times specifically um, uh, on the website, or uh, you should email us and let us know that you're coming, and we'll, uh, we'll have the cardboard for you. All right. Uh, so this is the gift card for uh, West Lakes Arlington Hardware. Now this is a very tough question. What's the name of the cow that's associated with the glue that you should use? All right. Oh, let's go with the red with the red shirt back there. What is it? Elmers. Elmers. And Elmer is a cow, right? You never knew that they made glue out of cows. Horses, maybe, but not cows. <laughs> all right, all right. I got it. I got another one, um, and this is uh, this one needs to be. This is a shirt, a River Legacy shirt, and it's an adult small, I think. Is it not, Tim? Uh, yeah. An adult small shirt. So those that are adult small sizes should answer the question: What kind of tape is not allowed? Let's go with one of the young ladies up there. Sure. Plastic or duct tape, but ducks float. Why wouldn't you want to use duct tape? <laughs> All right, okay. All right, and the last question, uh, the second to the last question, is uh, what type of caulk uh, is, uh, is best used? The what? Alex Plus. All right, well, he's reading the label. He's pretty sure. Just for that acuity, we're going to give you a towel. Okay, and then the last question, now this is, this is a tough one. No, you don't go there. Don't raise your hand before I ask the question. The last question is, what was the name on the back of Ryan's jersey, the guy that was the engineer? Uh, let's go over there. Huh? No, good guess, but no. Let's go back to the obnoxious one that raised his hand before I answered the question. Young, there you go. 
All right, so now we're going to go into the actual building of a boat, and there's going to be a lot of tips and techniques here that Gary and Bob are going to share with you. So once again, Gary Daly, Bob Sherwood. And by the way, the guy that was helping me distribute that stuff is Tim Perry, and you'll see Tim on uh, April 27th. He is offered to volunteer to uh, help get people in place and uh, uh, maybe even say something over the mic. You never know. Y'all thought you'd gotten rid of me already, hadn't you? All right. Ryan has gone through designing your boat a little bit. We've talked about the materials here. Now, if you can just envision having your materials gathered up. Okay, before you get started, though, you've got to, you've got to lay your boat out. You've got to design it. You've got it designed, but you've got to get it on a piece of paper, and you've got to work with it. I really encourage everybody to do kind of what we've done up here. I've got, this is just a rough drawing, and you can see this kind of looks like what we've got here. I just drew it out rough on a piece of paper, okay? And then after I did that, I transferred that drawing or that concept onto a piece of, uh, of a manila folder, good old manila file folder. Now, if you can, I don't know if you all can see that in the back or not, uh, but I like to do that. I've, I've done several boats over the years, and I always like to do this and lay it out and take this and fold it together and see, kind of get an idea of what my boat's going to look like. So I took this manila folder, the drawings on there, cut it, creased it, bent it, taped it together to kind of get an idea of what my boat's going to look like. And uh, I've done that several times where I get it and I fold it and put it together and I said, no, that's not what I wanted it to look like. And I can go back and change it and I can make modifications in doing it over. And this is real fast and real easy. Whereas if you start right away and you don't do this and you put it on a big piece of cardboard like this and fold it together and get it all shaped up a little bit and you go, oh, well, I didn't think it was going to look like that. I really thought it was going to look like something else. Make the mistakes on a manila folder or a piece of cardboard or a sm small piece of uh, construction paper or anything like that. Make a couple of mistakes there. You can do this in, you know, a half hour or so, whereas if you, you lay that all out and fold it up together, you've got many, many hours of time into that only to find out your boat doesn't look quite like you wanted it to. Okay, so now that we've completed that portion of it, we're going to take this big slab of cardboard that we've uh, we've laid out here and we've done a lot of as you can see we've done a lot of the marks and we've done some of the cuts just so we can move along a little bit faster here but if you look at this um, you can see some dashed lines a couple of different sizes of dashed lines actually and then you also see some solid lines on here well the solid lines are areas where we're going to actually cut the cardboard with a, a utility knife and then the uh, dashed lines are areas where we're going to crease the cardboard and we're going to make a, a, a fold or a cut, I mean, a, excuse me, a fold or a crease at that point and try to shape this thing up into a, a small boat and give you an idea what that's going to look like. So without further gabbing on my part, we'll get started on this. Um, when, we're, when we're making a cut, I always like to use a straight edge of some sort We've got a couple of different ones here we can use. You can use, a, you can use a big ruler like this, or even for some of these long cuts or long creases. We've got this guy here that works pretty good. You may or may not have that. If you don't, just a long piece of wood frequently works, like a, a one by four piece of wood will make a good straight edge. But we're going to make a couple of cuts on here. And uh, like I said, we did a bunch of this ahead of time so you wouldn't have to sit here and watch us do a whole lot of this and I'm going to try to do this without cutting the mayor's table all up. Now this is a single ply cardboard that we're working with here. Uh, a lot of the bigger boats when you build them, uh, Westlake's hardware will have available a double ply cardboard and for the bigger boats and most boats really you're going to want to use double ply cardboard. We use this single ply here just because it's a, a little easier to work with for demonstration purposes so we can move, move along a little faster. I'm gonna just get this guy cut out here real quick. And then we'll show you how to make some uh, creases and folds. Did anybody bring any Band-Aids? <laughs> I hope we don't need them, but we might. 
Bob's going to give me a hand here. Okay, so we got that little chunk cut out of there. Now this guy, grab me the creasing tool there, Bob. You know what? I jumped ahead of myself here a little bit, and I'm going I'm to back up. Let's put. I'm going to put this away for just a second. I forgot one thing that I wanted to do. You'll see, you'll see here in a minute when we fold this up, it's going to be a relatively small boat. Um, and to make a bigger boat like some of these guppy or whale sized boats, we're going to have to take sheets of cardboard like this that are four foot by eight foot, and we're going to have to splice several of them together to make one great big sheet that we can fold up into a sized boat that will actually carry some people. Now, just for demonstration purposes, we cut out four small pieces of cardboard here. If you can just envision these being, these pieces being um, four foot by eight foot, if you can just envision that, here's simply all we would do to splice these pieces together is we'd lay these out. You need a big area to do this in, but we'd have to, we'd lay them out on the floor and get them lined up like this. And a lot of times what we'll do before we uh, actually start gluing them is take uh, a piece of masking tape just to kind of hold them in position a little bit. We'll just put a piece of masking tape to hold these guys straight while we're getting ready to glue them together. There again, masking tape is a, an approved material, so we can, we can use all of that we want. Okay, so now I, I, I kind of just have these taped together, just kind of holding them in position a little bit. But to splice those, what we're going to do is we're going to take another piece of cardboard and, and glue it up and overlay the splice with that. And we're going to talk a fair amount more about... Um, glue and how much to put on and how to put it on here in just a little bit. The thing with this glue, you, you, you kind of have to, you got to get the right amount on there. If you get too much, it takes too long to dry. If you don't get enough, it doesn't stick well enough. And so you just want a thin layer to, to coat one side. You don't need to coat both sides of the, the cardboard. And that's pretty good right there. It's about like that. And then what we'll do is we'll just lay that on there. Grab a couple of those weights over there. Oh, yeah. Here's something that we'll frequently do. Just anything you got sitting around, just to put a little pressure on it to create a little downward pressure to hold that in place for a few minutes while that glue dries. And we'll do another one here real quick. And I, I'm not going to spread that one out so we can keep moving along, but... I'll just kind of jiggle it back and forth, and that, that spreads it out a little bit for us. Now I'll throw a weight on there real quick. Now you'll be surprised at how fast this glue dries once you get to working on it a little bit. Ryan, the engineer, could probably answer this question better than I, but um, how does this glue dry? Well. Basically what happens is the paper in the cardboard will uh, absorb the moisture out of that glue. Grab another weight there, Bob. Absorb the moisture out of this glue and out into the cardboard. And as that, that moisture comes out or the water comes out of that cardboard, it gets sticky pretty fast. We can let that set there for just a minute or two. And uh, you'll be surprised at how fast that sets up because that moisture is being wicked or absorbed into that cardboard pretty fast. Okay, so now, now we've built, we've built a, a bigger piece out of four smaller pieces. And here again, if you can envision this, these being four by eight sheets, you've got a pretty big piece of cardboard laid out now. Um, you'd have an eight foot by 16 foot piece. 
Now we've built some uh, whale class boats that hold 10 people that are 22, 23 feet long. And um, we end up putting nine sheets together. Okay, so nine sheets were 12 feet across and 24 feet long. We've got a big old slab of cardboard that we've uh, put together to make a big whale class boat. Now for a, a dolphin or a guppy, you know, you don't have to have that much, but you need more than one piece. And so this is, this is how you get to that. And uh, when we crease, you'll see some uh, examples of creasing here in a little bit. Uh, th this is double thickness in here, but you crease that just the way you would crease any of the other cardboard. We just uh, use our creasing tool and we'll show you how to do that in just a minute. Sorry, I forgot that step, but. All right, so now if we can just pretend again for a minute. We've spliced uh, several big sheets of cardboard together to make this guy. We did a cut there a second ago. Now, the creasing is very important, and uh, we'll uh, give you a, a quick lesson on creasing. There's not much to it. These dashed lines on here, all we do is take a straight edge, and like I said, this is, this is my favorite little tool. If it turns up missing during cardboard boat building season, I'm having an anxiety attack. I've been using this for a long time, but it works great. Uh, but we just put our straight edge along our line and just gently go back and forth. And what that does is it compresses these flutes these waffles we talked about a minute ago, it compresses those down, it squeezes them flat, and that allows you to make a nice, straight, even crease. Okay. See that? It compressed right there. If I, try to, if I try to fold that along that line without creasing it first, it's just gonna crease where it wants to. So it's really pretty easy. It's a little more difficult with the double ply cardboard, but you just have to be patient and go over it several times and here again, you can use this or the handle of a crescent wrench or handle of a pair of scissors or you know something that's just nice and round and is not gonna gouge or dig into your cardboard and, and rip your cardboard. Now, a lot of cases, you're gonna accidentally rip your cardboard. You're gonna get going a little too fast and uh, you might rip that cardboard, but that's, it's not that big a deal, but it does weaken that joint or that seam a little bit. So you need to be careful and just, just be patient and go slow with your creases. Now what you'll find is when you're creasing across the flutes, okay, if these are the flutes of your cardboard, if you're creasing across them, it's not, it's not uh, very easy to rip that cardboard, but you can. But if you're creasing along with the flutes, you get down in between a couple of those flutes and press a little bit too hard, it rips pretty easy. So you need to be a little careful going with the flutes as opposed to going across the flutes. Okay, now we've, we've uh, kind of pre-creased a lot of this and uh, so we're gonna, we're gonna start going here and, and see if we can shape this thing into a boat. Now, here's a, when you get, uh, if you've got a great big slab, you're building a whale class or a dolphin class boat and you've got double thick cardboard you're trying to crease, it's not gonna crease as easy as this single ply here. And what works nice, if you lay a, a long straight edge, it can be a two by four or a piece of wood or one of these things, right along the edge of that crease and put some pressure down on it, and like you can see it's doing here, and you lift up, okay? See, we got a nice straight crease. See our dashed line kind of disappeared there? I don't know if you can see it when we hold it up there, our dash line kind of disappeared. There it is again. So that crease goes right along there. Now we've got several other creases that we need to make here. And uh, when you got two that are close together, like these two right here, that's another good opportunity or another good situation where you want to keep a straight edge all the way along the whole thing and keep a little pressure on it. Okay, and we're going to come over here and catch this one. Okay, now we've got, we've got another crease on the back side of this that you can't see, but we're going to just flip it down right now. 
Now, you can see some of these, when we're folding these, we're folding them past 90 degrees. We're, we're not just folding it right here. We're folding it and coming past just a little bit. And what that's going to do for us is when it comes time to glue this together, that cardboard's not trying to pull away from us. It's, it's, uh, it's a little more relaxed, so it'll fit together better. So we're going to fold this up here a little bit. And uh, so we're going to fold this past 90 degrees there a little bit. Okay, so that's coming up. Okay, so that's kind of one side of our boat. It's, it's starting to come together here a little bit. I'm going to hold this up one more time. As you can see, we had these dashed lines where we wanted to make our creases. And if you'll remember, they're all gone now, but we had some solid lines where we made our cuts. I've got this long dashed line in the middle. What that is, is that's just a reference point for us where we want to bring the edge of this piece of cardboard to. We're going to bring it so we get that right where we want it. That's the way we've designed it. We're going to bring it right to that point and then and we're going to glue it there. Before we do that though, we're going to make a couple of more creases. Let's cut these uh, tabs off a little bit, Bob. Just the, these here, I think that we made those a little too long. These little tabs we got here, we cut those just a little too long. So we're going to cut about a half or three quarters inch off of that. Now that's a little, you just saw me just reach up and grab that. That's a fairly short crease and it's with the flutes. And a lot of those you can just, you don't have to use the straight edge. You don't have to get fancy. You can just bend it real quick. We're going to do the same thing on the other side here real quick. I just grab that and fold it up. Now that, that little tab there, this is something you'll learn after doing a little bit or when you practice with your manila folder you can see, okay, that, that little tab that we were cutting off, it's going to fold. This is the side of my boat. This is the side wall of my boat. This is going to fold in here very nicely. And later on, we're going to talk more about bulkheads, but we're going to put a bulkhead or fancy term for a boat wall or a boat uh, interior wall. We're going to put it right across here. And that gives us something to glue that to. If we, if we didn't have that tab there, then I just have an airspace in there and I wouldn't have anything to glue to. So I'm going to fold that in there like that. And we're going to put that bulkhead in there in a little bit. Now we're going to go around here and make a few more cuts and creases real quick so we can start gluing this thing together. I think we need to... Uh, we're going to cut some of this off here because this is going to fold up inside of here. Here, here again, we've pre-creased this and that's a short one so I can just grab that and fold it up there. We're going to go around and do some creases here real quick. All right, here Bob's grabbed the straight edge so we can do these long ones again. And yeah, it's going to go out of sight for you here, but. All right. Okay, there again, we're going, trying to go past 90 degrees a little bit, and that'll, we'll have to fight it less. Let's get that out of the way. Okay, now we've got one more crease on the back side of this here. I don't know if you can, I didn't put a dashed line on that. I don't know if y'all can see that, but we're going to just, all right. And that piece, that piece is ultimately going to come back and glue to the bottom of our boat. All right, this is kind of a big old flappy piece of cardboard here. I mean, there's, you know, you're looking at that going, man, are we going to get in that? I mean, what's going to happen when we get in that thing? Well, you'll see as we get a little further along here, as we shape this up and put it together, it's going to gain rigidity. It's going to gain stiffness as we go along here. So right now we're going to we're going to glue these flaps right here or these tabs down to the center portion. This is the this is going to be the bottom of the center of our boat right here. This section right here, and we're going to swing this down and we're going to glue it and we're going to bring it to that big dash line that we showed there. 
just so we can move along a little faster, we're not going to trowel this out every time. We're just going to swizzle it on there a little bit. You know, I say that. I say this every year we do this. I say we're not going to trowel it out, and then what happens? He's troweling it out. He's killing me. <laughs> you got to do it right. <laughs> and my glue's not wanting to come out. All right, here we go. Yeah. That's glue. It's not enchiladas, okay? Yeah. Sorry, that was a little tacky, wasn't it? All right. So we're going we're gonna to flip that up. Bob's going to... Here we're going to use our little trusty uh, weight plates on this again here. Just to have a little weight to put some pressure on that to hold it in place. We've got four or five of these here and we're going to stick those on there. And here again, I think you'll be surprised at how fast... We got one more. Yeah. You'll be surprised at how fast this glue... my deal there. All right, we're going to swing around the other side and get a little glue on uh, this other tab here. Did you notice he takes the glue, good blue glue bottle every time? Now we're, we're uh, speeding along here just so we can get through this. But if you'll, I want to show them this. If you'll look at the amount of glue we have right in this area, that's about the amount of glue you want to use. We're a little thin on that end down there probably. But th you get it much thicker than that and it takes too long to dry and it, your cardboard will wrinkle because there's so much moisture going into your cardboard. Um, you get any less than that, you don't get good adhesion. It doesn't stick well. All right, now. You kidding? Yeah, speaking of not sticking well. All right, we're going to flip this up in here, and then we're going to put these weights back in there. And we're going to stick it together here. Grab those. Are those clamps long enough, Bob? The long clamps. I don't know if those are. No? Okay, we're just going to put these clamps along there, and that just kind of holds, that's going to hold our boat in position a little bit. While we let this glue set up for a second or two. All right, now, I know we got this laying flat and you can't see inside of there, but we're getting ready to, to form up the stern of our boat. This side, this end down here is the stern of our boat or the back of our boat. Yeah, I'm going to hang this over here a little bit. This, we've got to let this glue set up a little bit. I know you can't see it, but we've got a little tab right underneath here that's sticking up. We're going to bring this around and fasten that to there. And this tab here, it's going to fold inside These, these guys are going to come together on the back right here. Okay, and we're going to hook those to each other to form a nice point, point on the back of our stern. And uh, we'll do the same thing on the bow or the prowl up here. Same thing, we've got those tabs and they're, 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 the cardboard's like this. If this is your flutes, it's folding inside and we're going to stick it together right there. Now, you, you've seen us use these weights as a clamping device, if you will. Another thing we use is a uh, clamping device, just these little scissor clamps. They work great. We're going to use those here in a minute. Another thing that we do a lot with is just good old masking tape. We'll use a piece of masking tape to pull two pieces of cardboard together while we're letting that glue set up and dry a little bit. It will. It will. If you're not careful, you've got to pull it off gently because it'll leave a little uh, acne on there. Uh, when you pull it off, but um, yeah, well, 
it's, it's tweaked a little because okay. of, of that right here. We're going to have to let this set just a second, I think. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, it's just a little crescent wrench, or not a crescent wrench, a uh, coping saw. Any hardware, Home Depot, anybody's got them. Now, I, mine had a, you know, they have a little blade, a little saw blade in there, and it rubs my hand raw, so I just, I just took that saw blade out of there and put a little piece of uh, bailing wire across there so it's a little more comfortable to grip on your hand. But uh, I've got two of them, and it's just a little coping saw. They're, they're not expensive. It's, I don't know. $2.99 or something, and they work, they work great. Sometimes the crescent wrenches uh, will have a little lip or a little ridge on them where they're molded together, and it'll, uh, sometimes that'll cut, your, cut through your cardboard a little bit. Okay, with a little bit of luck, this should be stuck together halfway decent now. Bob's going to pull that off of there. Tell you what, Bob, let's put a piece of tape across, across the top of there. And we're going to try to put a piece of tape across the middle of this to just kind of hold this boat in the position we ultimately want it in. Okay. With the clamps we had on there a minute ago, it was, it was pulling our sides in a little too much, and then this, what, which doesn't allow this to fit together the way we want it to. Okay. Now, we were talking about that a minute. I was trying to show you these tabs inside of here. I think maybe you can see them a little better now. We've got these tabs. And we're going to put a little glue on those guys right here, and we're just going to fold this in here and across right here. This will be an area where we'll want to use a piece of tape just to hold that together. And we'll show you another technique for clamping or holding glued areas together here in just a minute. All right, I'm going to tip him up on his side, and we're going to put a little glue right in here on this tab. And Bob, I'm sure, is going to insist on trialing it out. Yep, called that, didn't I? Uh, not yet. Now, right down in here, where this comes down in here, where it's really getting to a small surface area, this is a this is a point where boats leak a lot, right in these little corners. So I always like to get make sure I get glue down in there good. Now here you can see here we've got a little glue dripping here. Where's it, Bob? We always keep a damp towel around to wipe that off. You can you wipe it off as soon as it gets on there. If you don't, it's not that big a deal, but if you want your boat to look real nice and pretty, uh, you don't want any glue drips on there. Okay. Now, the bad part about wiping it down is now it's wet and the tape sometimes doesn't stick very good. We'll see how we do here. We'll, we'll get to caulking here in a little bit. All right. Uh, let's put one more on there, Bob. Now here's, here's a trick that makes uh, some veteran boat builders cringe a little bit, but it works nicely. If that tape was slipping or we were in an area where uh, we were having trouble getting a clamp on it, we'll just shoot a little screw in there. Okay, we shoot a little screw in there. Now the rules say that you can't use screws on your boat. You can use it at this point, but when your glue dries, that screw's got to come out because we don't want screws in boats that somebody else might be rowing and, and cut themselves or poke themselves with a screw. And you're thinking to yourself, well, wait a minute, that guy just punched a hole in his boat. Well, we'll come back and show you how to deal with that here in a little bit. Okay, we're going to flip this up, and we're going to do the same thing on this other side over here. I'm going to just... Normally, I wouldn't like to flip this crease backwards, but I'm going to just so you can see what's going on in here. Now these two tabs that are coming together here in the front, I'm going to go ahead and put the glue on that now because when we pull this around, sure wish you'd try that, Bob. I'll take care of that. Okay. Want to do the other one? Yeah, you can put, then we got a little extra glue there, so we're going to throw it on there and try not to get too much glue on the mayor's carpet. Does anybody know the mayor? Okay. Now these, we're going to fold these guys inside right there. Sometimes you got to wrestle with these a little bit. All right, I'm going to turn him upside down so we can work on him here a little better. And that got in a bind there somehow. 
Okay, that little corner got in a little bind. I had to wrestle with it to get it loose. I'm going to put a piece of tape on there. All right, we got smarter. We can put our tape on first. And now we're going to wipe our glue off. That's good. Okay. So now we've got the, uh, the stern of our boat kind of glued together there a little bit. Now you can see, all right, we don't have such a floppy piece of cardboard anymore. It's starting to get a little stiffer, starting to get a little more rigid. You know, we got a little something going on here. And that's going to continue to improve as we add more and more structure to this boat. So we're going to just do real quick, we're going to do the same thing on the front we just did on the back. And I'm going to get up in this corner here real good. Okay. All right, Bob's going to slap a little tape, just a couple pieces of tape on there to hold that together for us. Yeah, one more right there should be good for now. What's that? Well, my prow or the, my bow of my boat, the triangle on it's a little bit longer than the back. Now, I've seen boats that uh, it's the same length front and back, and then it doesn't matter. We've seen boats in races where they, uh, during the heat of the battle, get turned around and they're going backwards. And, and instead of trying to turn the boat around, the crew members will just turn around and, and paddle the other way, which is pretty quick thinking, really. All right, we're going to... Tuck that inside of here like we did on the other end. I'm going to turn this up so we can see what we're doing here a little better. A second, Bob. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to put a clamp inside there. Okay. Now we talked about these little, uh, these little kind of clamps. Hold this up for me, Bob. Well, these two tabs come to the middle in there. We're going to reach down in there and put a clamp right down in there to hold that together. And we really should have done that on the back too, so it's not too late. That glue is still moist enough on the back that we can still do that. All right, and we, our tape popped off up there, Bob. I'm going to pull this tape across here a little bit. It popped up off on us. Yep, yep. We've done that too where you, you just basically make a, a crease like this, you know, rather than straight up and down. And that, that works nicely too. We were just trying to do one that's fairly simple to get put together in a short period of time here. Okay, so now this guy... He's, he's shaping up again, and Bob, if you grab that end, you can see it's getting, getting a little more rigid all the time. And I'll tell you that one of the keys to making a boat rigid and hold together good for you, number one, these hollow walls like this work great to add, add some additional rigidity to the boat, but one of the big keys is having bulkheads or walls in there. So we're going to slide some bulkheads and walls in here real quick. We're going to put one in the front, one in the back, and then we're going to put one in the middle here too. We're going to slap these in there real quick. Kind of running short on time. He loves doing that. He was mad that I did the first one, but. Okay, so we're going to glue all of these tabs up, all four of these tabs on these little bulkheads. I'm going to slide one in there and kind of just show you how that goes. Now, if you remember, Earlier I showed you we had these little tabs that fold inside the wall here, so I need to put a little glue on that, those guys there too, to stick our, uh, stick this bulkhead. So I'm going to reach down in here. Huh? Oh, well, well, wipe it off, wipe it off. Okay, you can see I put a little glue on those tabs down in there. I don't know if everybody can see that or not, but... 
this bulkhead we're getting ready to stick in there is going to fit to there. I premature, prematurely glued one of these, uh, the top flap on this. We weren't quite ready for that yet. Now this, these become a little wrestling match sometimes sliding these down in here because this boat's getting more rigid and getting firmer. That fit in there pretty good. Okay, so we got, we got a front wall in there now. Now we're going to go to the back and do the same thing back there. Same thing, I'm going to hit a little glue on these tabs that fit inside the walls there. All right, slide this guy down in there. Now here, let me, sh I, I did that last one kind of quick. This tab here is going to stick to the floor, the bottom of my boat. These here are going to come right up in this area right here and stick to that outside wall of the boat. Okay, starting to look like a boat. Need to, yeah. Now, this trick we did here, we're going to do again here, just to hold this together. Let's put one across it. Just kind of hold that in position while that bulkhead dries, and we might even hit that with another piece of tape there to kind of get that in position. And here again, this would be a good spot. You could use a screw if you wanted to. But we won't. All right, now these, uh, I'm going to flip it up here. You can see these little tabs are overlapping each other a little bit. Okay, so I want, I'm going to put a cover on this. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll just call it a bow cap or a stern cap. And, but I want these nice and flat and even, so I'm going to do, basically I'm going to do what I call a double cut, where I'm going to cut through both layers of cardboard at the same time to the corner, all right? Now I cut them both and see then it comes together perfectly. I'm cutting through both layers at the same time and that gets that to line up just perfect there. I'm going to do the same thing on the front here. And one more over here. And okay, Bob's pulling our clamps out of there. That's set up. Okay, n now that I did that, those those all fit together nice there, and I've got a nice tab or a nice flap to, to glue our bow cap to. The pencil. All right, now an easy way. To go ahead, you go ahead and do that. We're going to put a cover on here, and we're going to get this lined up, and I'm just going to hold it down, and Bob's going to just simply trace it underneath, and then we'll cut it out from there. Seems simple, but it works. Got a little scribble there. He got a little wide there, but we'll, we'll cut it to that inside one, and I think it's going to fit. While he's doing that, we're going to talk about this uh, center bulkhead. Okay, now this one's, you know, these other bulkheads we put in here, they were just, just a flat piece. All right, this one's going to be a little different. Okay, we're going to make a box, basically, and that's going to fit down in the center of our boat there, and that's going to create another bulkhead right in the middle. If you can swing over here for a second, Bob. He, watch, we, we grab this boat now. It's getting pretty rigid, but I can still twist it. I can still twist and turn it just a little bit. But we get this center bulkhead in here that really solidifies the boat. So I think I'm going to pull this tape off of here right now. And if you pull it off real easy like that, just kind of gently go like that, it won't pull the, uh, it won't rip the cardboard so bad. Now, if you leave it on there a long time, if you leave it on overnight or something, then it, then it gets a little harder to get off. Okay, Bob's going to swing around and put that, that front uh, 
bow cap on there. I'm going to glue up this bulkhead real quick. Yeah. Okay, we just slap that glue on all of those tabs real quick. Now this is kind of a forehand operation here. I'm going to need Bob's help to help me push this down in there. We're going to sh shape this up like a, a little box. And we got a little glue on there, and I didn't... Normally we would measure that and make sure we get that right in the center, but for today's exercise, we're not going to worry about that. We're just going to put a piece of tape right across there, glue that guy in place, and uh, wipe a little excess glue off here real quick. This is it. These center bulkheads or walls like I just put in here, this is a key, key component to giving your boat strength and stability. Uh, normally if you're building a if you say if you built a dolphin boat that you had three passengers in, three crew members, make a compartment for each crew member by building a bulkhead or a wall between those sections, and it really gives a lot of strength and stability to your boat. All right, he, Bob did all the hard work here. I'm going to take the glory, put that on there, and we're going to just put a little weight on there. Sure. Okay, while Bob's working on that back one, I had to trim this off there just a little bit. While Bob's working on that back one, we need to talk about our, we're getting real close to having our boat constructed, but now we gotta waterproof this baby. We gotta make sure no water's gonna get in there. We've got two different types of seams on this boat. Down on the bottom here, as soon as this dries up a little bit, I'll show you. But right down here, underneath here, we've got some exposed flutes. We've got some flutes of that cardboard that are exposed. If you don't get those covered up, man, water is going to go shooting in there and your boat's going to melt and go down pretty fast. So what's the best way to, to deal with that to cover those flutes up? Well, the best way is with tape. Now, you, we use several different kinds of tape. We can use masking tape. Um, we can use this paper packing tape. This is pretty fast and easy, so I'm just going to use a piece of this right now. But what we would do, we'd pull our uh, masking tape off of here because our, our glue should be pretty dry underneath there. And we're just going to lay a piece of tape on there, fold it neatly under. Now, obviously, I didn't go the whole way. But that's all you have to do, that's all you have to do to protect those exposed flutes on, the, uh, on this area right here. Now, if you remember, up here on the front, we had two little tabs that folded together and came inside. Okay, so we, I call that a knuckle joint, or I don't know what you want to call it. I'll call it a knuckle joint for now. But up here, we've still got a seam where water can get in there, but... We don't have any exposed flutes. So you can use tape there if you want to, but normally that's a seam where I would use caulk. And I'm not going to open a tube of caulk today. Everybody knows how to run a caulk. I guess we are going to open a tube of caulk. We've already got it open. Might as well. What we would do is just gently shoot a little caulk in that joint. And we'll spin this around here in a minute so you can see it. And then I normally just smooth it out with my finger, sh making sure I'm shoving it down in that, in that joint a little bit. And um, then you're gonna, you know, if you've got some excess on there, I just use my finger or a, a damp towel and you wipe that excess off. You'll be able to come up here when we're done and take a closer look at how that looks when that goes together. But here again, Boy, this stuff is this stuff is the greatest. Uh, Alex Plus, caulk by DAP. Um, 
they make it clear, white, different colors and stuff. This particular tube is white, and it's, it's a little grittier, a little grainier, and it kind of, it dries a little faster, but I don't know, I like the clear. The clear has a little bit, bit different texture to it, and I like the clear, and that's what I like to use. So we've just about got this baby put together. So if you can bear with me here, we've got two different types of seams that we need to cover. One with the tape, if we've got exposed flutes, a non-fluted seam or a knuckle seam, put some caulk in there. Once we've done all of those seams with, on the boat, we've taped them all or caulked them all, whichever is appropriate for that type of seam, then we're ready to waterproof our boat. Okay, you're at the point now where we're gonna put the two or three or four coats of polyurethane on there and then follow that with whatever color scheme you want to. Now I'm gonna talk just a second, I know I might be running a hair over here, but I'm gonna talk just a second about class two boats also. This is what's called a class one boat. You're gonna have crew members in here that are rowing with a paddle. We also have class two or a mechanical division boats. Class two boats, um, follow all of the same rules as class one boats. The boats got to all be cardboard, got to use the same kind of tape, the same kind of uh, caulk, the same type of waterproofing, et cetera, except it can have a propulsion system. It can have a propeller, it can have a paddle wheel, um, it could have a jet pump, you know, what, how, whatever kind of mechanical <coughs> propulsion system that you can dream up to put in that boat is okay. That, that uh, propulsion system has to be attached to the cardboard portion of the boat um, and that that makes pretty fun and exciting stuff they're a little more complicated it's probably not a project for a first timer uh, but but it's a lot of fun and usually from year to year we'll have anywhere from uh, five to maybe six or seven or eight class two or mechanical boats out there here Bob's gonna we've got an this other tape ready here now. I'm just going to show you how this stuff works. This is uh, jumping around a little bit, I know, but we're trying to wrap up here. This, uh, this is that old paper packing tape that I talked about in the supply segment. I just, I just dump it in a pail of water. I let the excess water run off of it. Gently smooth it on a seam. Take a sponge. Just wipe off the excess water and in about three minutes, that'll be dry on there. Now there's another example of where we had some exposed flutes and we wanna cover those flutes. And this, I really recommend you use that kind of tape because it's, it sticks good, stays on good. Any of this self-adhesive tape, this paper packing tape with self-adhesive or masking tape, as, uh, as it gets out in hot sun, sometimes that adhesive gets a little slippery or greasy on there and the, that tape will actually slip away. But anyway, now if we grab both ends of this little guy, we can just slap together here real quick. I can't, I can't twist or turn this at all. I mean, it's really stiff and really rigid. And the key to that is these, these bulkheads uh, that we put in there. But uh, I know we went through that awful fast, but we kind of wanted to give you an idea of what it takes to put a boat together and kind of what all the steps are. And I, I, it's a little easier to visualize if you can see a somewhat finished product. And uh, we'll be glad to stay after her and answer any questions you've got. Um, if anybody's got any detailed questions they want to ask about the class two or mechanical boats, we've built, uh, I don't know, probably four or five, six mechanical boats. And they, they are more detailed and they do take more time and a little, little more challenging, but they're, they're a lot of fun. And so I'd encourage anybody to ask any questions they have about mechanical boats or a regular class one boat well, after class here today. And, uh, with that, I'll turn it back over to Mr. Ryan, and Good. I'll go see if I can get the glue off my hands. There you go. Let's give a hand to our <laughs> boat builders extraordinaire. Okay. I have a few things I need to uh, give away if you have the right question. Now, the first question is, on the day of the race, it's pretty noisy, so you don't have to do this, but in a meeting like this, you normally want to... Silence your phone. So our first gift goes to those that the phone went off. <laughs> there you go. All right, now the second thing is, there's a, there's a lot of stuff that went on here. Uh, and so if you wanted to re-watch this, 
or see this or go back over some of the points that Gary or Ryan have made, what would you do? Yes, sir, in the back. On the YouTube at the city. So that's, uh, that's the second. All right. Now, obviously, some of you are here with multiple people, and you want to determine what size boat you've got and how many people are going to be in that boat. So can anybody kind of tell me what the categories of boats are? I've already got you. How about you, sir? Guppy, dolphin, and whale. And guppies is one to two people. Dolphin is three to five. Here's our winner here. And whale is six to ten. And just as a side note, Gary mentioned the mechanical boats. And, uh, and you can see some of those. I'll ask Gary a question when he comes back on something. There's mechanical boats. And then for those that haven't kind of planned ahead but want to have the excitement of, of that day, that event, there's what's called build on site. Uh, all right, for what do we have next? A medium adult, medium adult shirt. So if you're not medium adult, don't answer this question. Uh, what are the two types of cardboard that Mr. Daly mentioned? Yes, sir. Has to do with plies. Now let's go next to you. No, but we'll give you the towel anyway, or the shirt anyway, but it's single and double ply. And this, when you have a chance of coming up here, it's single ply corrugated. All right? And um, uh, so finish this sentence. This is a tough one now. Finish this sentence, and this is for a $20 gift card uh, at uh, Westlake's Arlington Hardware. Metal, plastic, and wood. Yes, ma'am are not allowed. Ding, 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 ding. All right. So even if you use, and here's a nice hole here that they uh, put a screw into to hold it together. If you use that, uh, you need to take it out. Somebody could get hurt or you could be disqualified. And so, uh, so that's very important to, uh, to hold to that. All right, last question before we go on to our next session. Uh, what are the two other new events that I described? In the purple. Very good. Horseshoe, tossing, pitching, horseshoe pitch, pitching, and three-point basketball. And you all can participate in that as appropriate. All right, the next, uh, the next session is Sue Wilhide. She is a uh, teacher at Pope, fifth grade. Go for the Panthers, right? Pope Panthers. And uh, she is a fifth grade teacher there, and she's going to talk to you about kind of design ideas and the math and the science behind them. All of the stuff, if you haven't built one yet, that you're about to learn. Sue? Is it on? Did you turn it on there? I thought I did. Nope. There you go. It'll be on in a second. I don't like these things. OK, well, I am here. I know I see a lot of familiar faces. I'm very happy to see that particular familiar face back there, former student who is now in junior high building a Yay! Makes me so happy. That is, I love that he's going on to do that somewhere else. Um, I teach at Pope Elementary. This is going to be my 15th boat this year that I've built with a group of fifth graders. And uh, I, all I can say is to all you teachers, which I know there are a lot of you here, is that this is probably the very best thing I do all year. It, out of all the things I do, this is my favorite thing. And uh, even though I know, and we all know that uh, as tests change and as ex expectations change, you know, they, we take all the fluff out. This is a way to put something in that is absolutely no fluff and all fun. And, um, and I think that, that your students will learn more by building this boat than they probably learned in any four weeks. You could have taught geometry, measurement, fractions, perimeter, area, volume, they have to do all of that to build this. I mean, you could see with Gary's presentation how much of this that they have to, to um, actually use. You know, they have to calculate the volume of the boat. They have to figure out how much water it will displace. When they're actually measuring and drawing the lines, they're having to divide fractions. They're having to um, calculate, you know, they're, they're actually having to use a, a tool, you know, that we try so hard to get them to use, and they're actually getting real-world experience, so it's meaningful to them. 
And that is the, that's the thing that, you know, you can't get in a textbook. You can't get meaning out of it unless you're actually, they have a product that they're going to end up with that they're going to actually have to get in and try to get around in water without sinking. That's the, that, that is the goal. So, um, so why build a boat? All of those reasons, you know, and also because you're going to really enjoy it. The other thing I love about the project is it's not just for your brilliant kids. It's not just, it, you know, it involves everything. It involves art. It involves imagination. It involves hands-on things that a lot of your kids that um, spend a lot of time on the weekends building things with their parents can pick up really quickly. So I love that every single student um, has an opportunity to shine when they, when they build the boat. And that is another great thing, not to mention I get to hear all of their crazy music while we're working, and I get to see their great dance moves, and it's just a really fun time. We have a really good time with this. Um, how do you get the money for the boat? Um, well, they're helping us out with the cardboard, because that really could be one of the most expensive elements to it. Uh, I think the cardboard, if you were to go buy it, is $12 a sheet. So to get five free sheets of cardboard, that's really great. Um, and what we usually get is two-ply cardboard, which is what we need. Um, also, uh, parents are really helpful. I usually send out a letter saying these are kind of some of the things we need to build the boat. And, you know, I might get a tube of caulk here and a roll of tape here and a Home Depot gift card here and or, or a Westlake Arlington hardware gift card, which I love because... I actually do go up there quite a bit during boat building season because they are so helpful there. And it is the only place that I have been able to find um, this tape that Gary was talking about. It's the only place I can find it. So if you're looking for the paper tape, it's at Westlake Arlington Hardware. So, and we do use quite a bit of that, especially working with kids. So um, I've had, I've written, um, the PTA has donated money towards it. I've, I've written a request, a budget request. Um, our dad's club has helped us with it. So in the end, you can build a boat for under $100, and you can usually um, get all the things paid for. And I usually don't have to spend hardly anything out of pocket on it. So money should not be a reason not to do the project. Um, where to build the boat. <laughs> very important, very, very important because you want a place that does not have a lot of uh, rocks or anything that you would be laying your cardboard on. Uh, it takes a while to build one, so you want a place that it's not going to be disturbed over and over again and that you have to keep moving it around. And also, you need a place where you can actually get it out of the door when you're finished. That's a very important thing to uh, think about, and believe me, I have learned this from experience, is you know uh, when you're planning your boat, measure the doorway, and also measure if you're having to go into a hallway, make sure your hallway is long enough so that when you get the boat out the door, it actually will get out the door without you having to cut it in half and then tape it back together again and try to figure out how to make that work. So very important. Um, also, I've had in the past parents, um, and when I was at another the first school, West, where I started, um, I had parents in the neighborhood donate their garages for a while. So we did that for a while. So I used the science lab in our building. And usually we can get it folded up to a place where we can move it around. At, we spend one Saturday and we get it folded up to the point where we can move it around in the lab and get it out of people's way. So um, that's really important uh, and that's one thing to really consider. Uh, this design right here is a great design for kids. I teach fifth grade. I've used this design pretty much every year. It's a great design because it's pretty simple. Um, it's very stable. It's there's not a whole lot of um, cutting because they don't do the cut. That's the only thing I do in fifth grade is I do the cutting. Um, they do everything else. Another tool that I have used for scoring that I found that's better with little kids is they sell these uh, D rings at the hardware store. They're like shaped like a D. And the kids can just put their hands in there and kind of put their weight down on it. And it works real well with uh, younger kids. It makes a nice little crease, rounded crease, without cutting the cardboard up too much. Um, safety is always super important when you're planning to work with kids, as you know. The polyurethane, um, 
It does have a very strong smell, so you have to be very careful about kids with asthma and kids that have um, breathing problems because it is um, and make sure you're in a very ventilated area on the day that you're, or the days that you're using it, because it is. A, it, it doesn't really matter what kind you buy. It does have a strong smell. The water base is less strong, but the water base I don't like very much. It doesn't really work. As, it doesn't waterproof your boat very well. So, um, if you are, I, I just caution you on the on the smell of that polyurethane. Also, just warning your kids that they are going to ruin their clothes. There's just no way. Of, no, whatever they wear that day, they're going to get paint on it, and it's not going to come out of their clothes. Make sure they know that. Um, organizing it with kids, um, depending on the group. I know we've got scout groups, we've got teacher groups. Some of you are here with science clubs, probably. Mine, we just, we, I make a schedule. I send home a schedule of all the days I'm, and times I'm going to work. The kids bring it back to me, letting me know when they can work, and then. I give them a schedule. I give them a schedule of the days and times. So you do not want 27 kids standing there <laughs> doing nothing. You want to make sure you have it scheduled out so that you have no more than probably 10 people working at once. Otherwise, it just turns into kind of chaos. Um, also, uh, they talked about the different divisions, but one of the best parts of this, the artistic, is the artistic part. You know, coming up with a theme. Um, deciding what you're going to wear that day. Um, I've done everything from Poposaurus to Popolo 13 to uh, we were a covered wagon one year, and it's just so fun. You can take whatever you're learning about in school and turn it into a theme for your boat. So it's really, it's really fun. And uh, they have all these great awards you can win. You don't have to just be the fastest to win a, an award. You can win an award for um, being the most spirited team, they have the Raw Raw Award, the most incredible sinking, the Titanic Award. Won that one once. I um, <laughs> think I've won them all once. <laughs> um, and actually, that was I did. I was kind of really unhappy about that, but the kids thought that was the best of all. The kids really loved that Titanic Award. So we had the violin section there that year too, playing the theme song for us and everything. So. Uh, you can win, and, and practicing the rowing is always problematic, but you can do it in a swimming pool, or I've done it where we didn't really even have water, we just held the oars and we had trees, and for every stroke they had to take a step, and then when you got to the tree, you kind of showed them what to do with the oars, because I know it's really hard in school to come up with a way to practice rowing. Um, but it is important for them to kind of have an idea of what they're going to do when they get in the boat. Um, the course is a U-shaped course for the kids. So, and then if they get into the finals, is it still going to be a W-shaped course in the finals? So they have to at least be able to make one left-hand turn. Like to, they go out and then they turn left and then they come back. And then for the finals, they go out and they have to make a W, which is very fun to watch. Um, <laughs> the parents are all standing there going, turn, turn, and the kids are all, uh, it's, it's great. It's so fun to watch, but it, I just have, I can't say enough about it. I know we're running out of time, and I don't want to take over my time, so I'll stay for a couple minutes after if anybody has any questions about management or anything like that. And um, the text, uh, again, I, the text that you will cover, I don't, I'm not going to go through every one. Just know that it's going to cover all of your geometry text, and it's probably going to cover all of, a, a lot of your fractions text, and it's going to cover um, area, you know, area, volume, perimeter, and measurement, converting measurements from, um, you know, inches to feet, you know, all that kind of thing. Yards, even though we don't use a lot of yards, we do use feet and inches a lot, and we do have to half our inches or half our dimensions a lot, so we're always having to divide fractions. So. It's, it's a great thing. Anyway, thank you. Good. Thank you, Sue. <laughs> Go Pope Panthers. All right, we're going to wrap up real quick here. I've got a couple more things to give away. And then if you want to come up, there are these uh, rulers. I gave away a couple earlier, but I've got some extras uh, that, uh, uh, that you can have. So a couple of questions. Uh, this is for a towel, a River Legacy towel and the uh, question is how many people per year 
visit the Science Center. I'll go back there. 40,000 people a year. All right, so we're going to throw in the towel. This could be fun. Whoa. All right, and I've got a gift certificate. And who can tell us the four sponsors? You've got to tell me all four. All four. I'm going to go back there. Yep. <laughs> it's, in the, it's in the paperwork. All right, you're going to have to split the gift certificate. Bates and? Nope. Nope. Moritz. Huh? No, no, no. All right. I'm forgiving. You get this anyway. Come up and get it from me later. I've got it. All right. So once again, it's, uh, it's uh, Moritz dealerships. It's uh, Star Telegram, Bates Container, and Westlake. And you're thinking it's Randall Mill because Gary's up here and because he's won the corporate challenge and so forth, but that's not the case. <laughs> All right. Uh, so the date again is April 27th. 8:30 is when the gates open for the youth boat to come, bo youth boats to come in. And if your boat gets soggy and you want to let it Titanic on its own, you can participate in the Brave the Waves, where at the last event of the day we turn on the wave machine, and those that are out there get to destroy their boat and. And, and gracefully dive into the pool for an early swim, and uh, so that's there. Uh, and th the reason, you know, a lot of the boats don't survive. Um, in, in fact, I don't know what maybe 80% of the boats don't make it. And, and the, the, uh, the other label that you've seen around is the, uh, the Park and Rec's label, the, the uh, fun, uh, naturally fun label from the Park and Rec's people. And they are very important to us, and we want to thank them in advance for helping us pull the event off and, and do that. Ah, very good. So we're still looking for other sponsors. If anybody uh, knows anybody that is a prospect for that, this is, by the way, Christy Payne. Christy is your font of knowledge. If you have uh, for reserving uh, for reserving cardboard. For these two dates, uh, you need to get a hold of Christy. You can go through the website and send her an email saying, yes, we're coming, we're schooled, this name, and uh, we need cardboard, et cetera. But Christy is the, uh, uh, the person that's, uh, that's controlling all of this and is very capable. Thank you in advance. Uh, the, other, the other thing I wanted to mention, you heard me mention the Brave the Waves thing. Uh, most of the boats don't make it just because it's fun to destroy them as well it is, as it is to build them. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't build for quality and for durability. Uh, and I was just asking uh, Mr. Daly how old his oldest boat is. And you see one of the uh, kind of tag behinds. This is Snoopy. And Snoopy trails in the water. I think there's a picture that runs in the slide presentation. Trails in the water behind the Red Baron boat. And the Red Baron boat is, I think he's got its 16th year coming up. 16 years, the Red Baron boats. Uh, been floating in, uh, in the cardboard boat regatta. So with that being said, um, we need your evaluations, if you would please. Fill those in before you leave or as you leave. Drop them off at the front desk. Uh, you can do a boat kit for $125. You can do build on site if you don't want to do it in advance for $50. And, um, uh, and I talked uh, the, about our sponsors, Moritz, Star Telegram, Bates, and Westlake Arlington Hardware, and visit us on the website at the uh, uh, Cardboard Boat Regatta. The River Legacy Facebook page is facebook.com riverlegacyparks or riverlegacy.org. So unless there are other questions that need to be in front of the group, I'll adjourn us and uh, thank you, and we'll see you braving the waves and at our Cardboard Boat Regatta. Thank you very much. <laughs>